this picture of my father was taken around 1950. He would have been uh, about seven years old. Um, I actually just uh, spent the day scanning a bunch of photos of him to put on Facebook for family and and friends and things. And originally I was going to make a shorter video of this and uh, attach it to the beginning of an LP. And uh, that's not going to happen. I want this to be kind of freestanding. So it's not associated with one LP. And if people don't want to watch it, they won't see it. And if people want to watch this, they don't have to watch you know, the beginning of the LP. Uh, so this is my father as an incredibly uh, young child. This is not the earliest picture of my father, but... Uh, he's a little angel, isn't he? All right, fast forward to uh, 1961. Um, this is the first picture of my mother and my father together. So, uh, they would have been married, I believe, in 1963. Uh, this was a month after they met. It looks like somebody caught him, right? Like, <laughs> they look guilty. Uh, yeah, it's a great, it's a great picture. Um, my father is 18 in this photo, and my mother is criminally young. I'm not going to tell you how old she is. Uh, and uh, yeah, they they married um, two years later, and uh, yeah, that's actually coming up next. All right, this is a picture of my mother and father uh, with my brother when he was five weeks old. Uh, my brother is 52. So, uh, y you're going to notice. Uh, you're going to notice that a lot of these photos um, look like... I showed these to a friend, and they said they look like very middle-class, kind of 50s, 60s photos. And uh, they are. My my parents did exactly what they thought good people did then. They, they got married. They bought a house. They bought a car. They took pictures of everything. Them standing next to the car. Them standing next to the house. Uh... And, uh, hopefully, I don't know what dog that is, though. Like, I should, I should have asked my mother about the dog. So, um, y yeah. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of family photos. My father was a family man. Um, but before, uh, we do that, I think we're gonna get into, um, we're gonna get into my father at, my father trying to be as cool as he can possibly be. Uh, I'll... You know, see you for that. If there's a picture of my dad, like, that's posed and he's trying to look g cool and stuff, uh, it, I guarantee you there's a guitar in the picture. My father played guitar since he was 14 years old. Um, he, he didn't, uh, at the end of his life, for, for most of the time that I knew him, he didn't own an electric. Um, uh, when he was young, he did. Uh, I have handwritten songbooks, like, of just lyrics of songs that he... He wrote down because there were hundreds of songs that he could sing um, and play. So, and it included things as diverse as like D Bob Dylan to like old Patsy Klein stuff. It was he was kind of all over the place. Nothing, uh, nothing very, nothing very new. Uh, any any newer stuff would have been newer country stuff. It wasn't. He never kept up with you know you wouldn't you wouldn't have caught him you wouldn't have caught him singing a uh, you know a, like a, an Aerosmith song or something or. Or anything out of the out of the seventies. He didn't. I don't think he had a, a version of Black Betty in there, like or especially like a seventies, you know, like Ram Jam version of Black Betty. Uh, so, um, y that's you know, uh, my father, my and my father was an excellent guitarist. He was, um, he was a a, a chord playing strumming guitarist, but he was a, he was a guy who. Who understood the structure of songs, and you could he could hear them, and he would figure them out by himself, and make the notes he needed to make, and he would record things. He would record things on um, cassette tape off of the radio, and play them over and over and over as he was writing them down, like figure out the chords and, and stuff like that. He could do that. He, he he could not tune a guitar by ear, but he could. Uh, he could he could he could he could figure out a song by ear apparently. And uh, that was a lot of my youth. A lot of my youth was uh, sitting around listening to my dad play guitar or going and hanging out with other musicians and stuff. And he never tried to make it. was never a thing he did for anything but fun. Like, it was the thing he did for fun. Personally, I'm a cat guy, but my dad, uh, my dad loved dogs. And we had a, a he had a, 
I, he had numerous. We owned numerous Pekingese throughout. Um, throughout the, well, throughout the course of his life, he owned several. I only remember one. Uh, my brother remembers, I think, three different ones. Um, this is actually this is a a photo taken with the doghouse at the first house that they bought. So uh, again, 19, 1963 or sixty four. So that's what they did. They had a kid. They bought a house. They got a car. They bought a dog. All right. One of the things I want to say. This is a picture of my father in nineteen sixty seven. This is a picture of him with my sister. My brother. My sister is one in this picture. She is forty eight right now. Uh, I want to say, uh, my dad um, worked really, really hard. If there were things that, like, I had to say to, like, define my father, I mean, like, my father was a good guy. My father was an amazing man. My father was a hardworking, honest guy. Like, that was his thing. He had his faults and his vices, like any human being does, but they were very, you know, they were very human, socially acceptable vices. Like, he, you know, he was a big beer drinker for years and years of his life up until, you know, five or six, seven years ago. Or, um, you know, he, he, uh, he was a tobacco chewer. Like, that was, um, stuff like that. That's the stuff my dad did. You'll also see in several of these photos he has a pipe. Like, he used to talk about how much he missed smoking his pipe. Uh, those are the kind of things, but, like, my dad literally worked like a dog his entire life. And, like, I bring that up because, like, when I say that these are just, like, you know, family middle class photos, like, I, I mean it. I mean, like, I mean, this is a guy who, like, my father was a supervisor at a woolen mill for years, and then he worked at an, an army ammunition plant building, uh... Uh, doing like f doing some some part of the black powder process in like rocket powder for like for ammunition like for for actual army ammunition and he was a sharecropper when I was a uh, a kid up until I was 13 I mean he we literally lived on a farm and got free room and board and he worked on the farm for a living wage and then he was a he was a maintenance guy. He was he did landscaping for years, and then was like a maintenance guy in a plastics factory for fifteen years until he retired about five years ago. So, um, uh, I just want to bring that up. I just want to bring that up because I I can't I I don't have a picture that illustrates that my father you know that my father had shoulder replacement surgery when he was like sixty two. Because he had worn out his joints from working himself to death to support his family. Like, that, that is not a contributing factor to why my father passed away. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, like, it's so, it's so quintessentially my father. It's such a thing that I have to just bring up. And the first thing I'm going to tear up about, because it's so important. And, uh... You know, that was a thing that, you know, that was, that was, that was so important to him. And it's the only way I can say it is I, I don't have a picture of him, like, standing in a woolen mill, you know, all covered in what, I don't even know what they do in a woolen mill. That woolen mill has been torn down for 50 years or 40 years or whatever. So, um, yeah, I, I, so I don't know how to illustrate that. I don't know how to illustrate the fact that, like... You know, aside from showing you pictures like this of him with his family. All right, and this is my father with me. Um, he would have been, oh, geez. Uh, my father and myself, he would have been 37 in this photo. Uh, yeah, a lot of this. My dad, uh, my dad aged incredibly well. Um, I'm going to show you. There's What's going to follow here is a... Um, well, it doesn't matter what's going to follow here. So this is my this is my father, actually, um, in the house that I grew up in because I recognize the paneling. Yeah, my father, um, my father really loved children, it, uh, which I think is evidenced by this photo. Um, he uh, really was was amazing at kind of getting down to the level of. Of little kids, he uh, he was a little iffy about holding newborn babies, <laughs> like, but other than that, and one of the problems, one of the big 
issues with his passing was that um, in this photo you can see him holding his great granddaughter which so this is my father at 68 or so three years before he passed um, and uh, their relationship was so strong in fact he was like a horrible influence on her like we would have to calm him down because he would he would cause her to be like a more disruptive kid like we would have to <laughs> we would have to beg him to act like an adult when she was around and uh, she w was old enough she is old enough to realize to kind of grasp what's going on and and I had to explain to her she literally asked me um, why he had to die and uh, that's rough it's incredibly rough but uh, it was one of the first things that came up when he found out about what was going on with him was he said how am I gonna tell her my father um, he had a great sense of humor he really was able to keep things in perspective he didn't uh, he didn't have issues with taking most things too seriously and uh, like I said like I said before my father was a good honest family man there was nothing incredibly fancy about him I think his you know his best suit had like some sort of cowboy print on it or something and involved cowboy boots but like and that doesn't matter to me but I just uh, I just want to say that like he was everything I don't know he was he was everything you could hope for in kind of a friend or you know a, a, a neighbor or a, or a father really um, I was lucky to have you know 35 years with him and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that the end wasn't too rough for him uh, I, I probably could have asked for better but considering the circumstances and uh, I'm gonna miss him I'll miss him every day it uh, it'll get easier I assume but it'll never be as good as it was and uh, if I can, you know, if I, if I become, I mean, I'm the man I am today because of my father. And if I can become half the man that he was, uh, that would be better than I could ever expect for myself. So, I love him, and I miss him.